In our modern society, we have ongoing concerns about our privacy, especially when our privacy is, is breached. There, there is an ongoing legal question as to whether or not someone can sue for a breach of privacy, whether there is a tort for a breach of privacy. In 2012, the Ontario Court of Appeal, which is the highest court in Ontario, you know, dealt, with that, dealt with that issue in the case of Jones and, and Tsig. So in that case, the facts involve a, uh, a Sandra, Sandra Jones. Uh, uh, Sandra Jones had sued uh, Winnie, Winnie to Sig. Um, both of them worked at, at Bank, of, Bank of Montreal. And so, so Winnie had surreptitiously uh, looked at Jones's uh, or Sandra's banking records because uh, uh, Winnie, as a part of her job, had access uh, to these uh, to these records, uh, you know, Sandra and Winnie didn't know each other, but but uh, uh, Winnie did did know that Sandra was now was now living with with her former husband, and uh, so so Winnie was curious about uh, the, the the financial or Sandra's financial situation, uh, so so she used her access as an employee to 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 look at. Uh, Sandra's banking records a, a, at least 174 times over a period of four, four years. So when, when Sandra discovered what had gone on, obviously she was very upset uh, and, and she, sued, she sued Winnie. Uh, so Sandra says that her pri privacy interest in her confidential banking information has been irreversibly destroyed and she claimed damages of $70,000 for invasion of invasion of privacy. The legal issue that the court had to deal with here was, you know, does Ontario law recognize a cause of action for invasion of privacy? Or in other words, uh, is there a tort for invasion of of privacy? And you know, they 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 talked about the fact that you know, this issue actually has been debated for the past 100 and 120 years. It's never been, never been fully, fully resolved by the courts. The, the court did determine that there can be a tort for breach of privacy. So what they, they, they call it a tort of intrusion upon seclusion. So it has a nice ring to it, intrusion upon seclusion. So they, the court set out a number of different requirements for this tort of intrusion upon seclusion. The first requirement is that the defendant's conduct must be intentional. Uh, the second requirement is that the defendant must have invaded without lawful justification the plaintiff's private affairs or concerns. And the third and last requirement is that a reasonable person would regard the invasion as highly offensive, causing distress, humiliation, or anguish. So the court applied that legal test to the facts, and it came to the, the obvious uh, conclusion that, uh, that Winnie Tsig had committed the tort of intrusion uh, upon upon seclusion, they the the three the three elements of the tort had been had been satisfied. You know what what Winnie did was uh, was intentional, uh, and it amounted to an unlawful invasion of of uh, Jones's uh, private affairs, and it is and is viewed as highly offensive to a reasonable person and caused distress, humiliation, or anguish.